Namaste. Welcome to another edition of N5D Afterthoughts on Patreon. I'm your host, Greg Prescott. And today I want to talk about something that's really near and dear to my heart. And that is the subject of losing friends upon your spiritual awakening. I wrote this article, So Your Spiritual Awakening Cost You Some Friends, a long time ago. I republished it in 2018, but I think I originally wrote this article 2010. Around the same time that I built N5D, I built N5D in 2009. And as I went down the rabbit hole, and as I became more public with my awakening, I started posting everything that was true and dear to my heart on my personal Facebook page. I had a close friend that I've known since we were both six years old. We met in first grade when he moved to upstate New York uh, from, I believe, Connecticut or Massachusetts, one of those states. And we were best friends all throughout grade school, junior high, high school, and beyond. He was the best man. I actually had co-best men, but he was one of my best men in my marriage to my daughter's mother, Amy. And uh, we've been through so much throughout the years. Uh, we've laughed until we cried. Uh, I've always been there for him. He's always been there for me until my awakening. So what would happen is I would post an article, an N5D article on Facebook, and my friend, Tom, would ridicule people's comments and in private, what I did was I said, hey, dude, that's not cool. You know, these people are experiencing and feeling the same things I'm feeling. It's not cool to ridicule them. And ultimately, as you guys know, I was a child and family therapist. I still am. But I was a child and family therapist when N5D was built. I built N5D as a hobby. And in psychology, when you ridicule someone else, it's usually that which you fear within yourself. So he would ridicule my friends and my posts that I had on N5D that I would post on Facebook. And like I said, in private, I would tell him, dude, that's not cool. And he continued to do it. So I unfriended him. That was, that was tough. So what I ended up doing was I wrote this article upon unfriending Tom and it's called so your spiritual awakening costs you some friends as I mentioned this article I wrote probably around 2010 or so and it was so easy to write because it was almost like automatic writing have you heard about that where you just go in a trance and you start writing that's what it felt like except I was typing and I wrote that article in what seemed like a matter of minutes I'm sure it was probably a lot longer than that but the time flew by and the words came out so quickly and easily because it was coming from the heart. And the pain that I felt of having to unfriend a longtime friend. So we had met in 1967 in first grade and I unfriended him in 2010, 43 years later. 43 years of friendship gone because of ridicule basically it was so easy to write this article and it's the one article that I've written that's probably the closest to my heart for those of you who haven't read the article I'll leave a link below this article where you can check it out it's incredibly thorough and many of you will be able to relate to every single word that's written in this article for example the article talks about groupthink. Groupthink is a psychological phenomenon that structures various belief systems within a group of people while discouraging individual creativity and independent thinking. Even within a group of individuals who are spiritually awakened, you will find groupthink. And an example of that is join any Facebook group and you'll find that a lot of people will congregate together under the same thoughts and ideas, basically regurgitating much of the same things that everybody else has been talking about. A lot of people are afraid to venture out and say something creative on their own 
because of the fear of group think being ridiculed by others by having those original thoughts that may not be in congruence with everybody else in the group or you may be going against what everyone else thinks in a group you may actually have the audacity to stand up for yourself and your beliefs and say something that may be contrary to what everyone else believes in you may be in a group where perhaps you don't believe in archangels you know I've written an article about that where just putting it out there I personally am on the fence about archangels but if you look at the prefix of archangels arc being the same prefix as archons is it possible that archangels are negative entities of course everything that we've seen and we've learned seems to be upside down and backwards there's a great quote by Michael Elner everything is backwards everything is upside down doctors destroy health lawyers destroy justice universities destroy knowledge governments destroy freedom the major media destroys information and religion destroys spirituality so if everything is upside down and backwards is it possible that perhaps these archangels aren't who we think they are when I interviewed Jordan Maxwell he once told me that he interviewed this gentleman who was going for his doctorate in theology and he was given access complete access to the Dead Sea Scrolls by the time he finished deciphering the Dead Sea Scrolls he became so disillusioned with what religion is ultimately trying to put out there that he became an alcoholic and disavowed religion and what he basically found out is that it's all astro theology for example in religion when they talk about the golden calf they're talking about the age of Taurus when they blew on the ram's horn that was talking about the age of Aries when Jesus fed the masses with two fish and a loaf of bread the two fish represented the age of Pisces and then when Jesus said follow the man bearing the pitcher of water to the house blah 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 he was talking about the age of Aquarius which we're in right now so groupthink is just one of the ways that we end up segregating and dividing ourselves and in turn we may end up losing friends over groupthink now getting back to my friend Tom he's liberal I'm not neither liberal or conservative I stand in the vibration of truth love and light but I would ask him I remember when Obama was running against John McCain and I asked him who are you voting for he said Obama I said can you name three things that he's ever done in his political career he goes no can you name one no then why are you voting for him he said well because I'm a Democrat that's what I do he said who are you voting for I said Ron Paul <laughs> and that was the last time I voted coincidentally it was back in 2012 I remember going to the voting poll and asking people specifically who are you voting for can you name three things that they've ever done in their political careers nobody could answer those questions but yet they stuck true to their belief systems and when you hold on to these outdated beliefs it creates dissonance in your relationships and that's what happened with my friend Tom and me and it's unfortunate that we have to have these kind of relationships that get ruined because of politics which in the greater scheme of things politics have nothing to do with ultimately the most powerful vibration ever known love now Conversely, in upstate New York, I have a dear friend uh, that I've known since we were, since I was 18, and I think she might have been a little bit younger. We eventually ended up dating, but we've been friends. She's since married and has a wonderful husband, beautiful children.
Thank you.